Hello, my name is Dale Witte. I am the choir director at Winnebago Lutheran Academy and a church musician here at Faith Lutheran Church in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Today's devotion is on Psalm 66, but before I get into the devotion, I want to ask you a question. What church are you a member of? Now, I don't ask this question to make you feel prideful and boastful about the church that you belong to, nor do I ask the question so that you're ashamed because you might not be a member of a church yet. Yet. I ask you this question to think about it because it's talked about or it's a component of Psalm 66. You see, there's two parts to Psalm 66, two large sections. In the first 12 verses, the church calls upon people to shout their praises to God. And in the final eight verses, the believer, the individual, in gratitude brings offerings and praise to God. Those are the two sections, the church and the individual. So let's take a closer look at the 12 verses and who the church is. But first, a story. So I used to teach sixth grade many years ago at St. Paul's Lutheran in Toma, Wisconsin. And by the time the kids got into my classroom, they usually had a lesson in either geography or social studies about community. And it went something like this. You live at your house and your house has an address. And that house address is inside of a city or a town or a village and that city, town, or village is in a county, and that county is in a state. You can see where this is going. And the state is a part of a country, and the country is part of a continent, and a continent is part of a hemisphere, and a hemisphere is part of a planet, and a planet is part of a... You get the idea. I think some people think about church in the same way as that geography or social studies lesson, like this. I am a member of Faith Lutheran Church. Faith Lutheran Church is a member of, or is in the Winnebago Conference of the Northern Wisconsin District of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod, which is a worldwide synod, but which is also a member of the Confessional Evangelical Lutheran um, Church or conference. And so you see, people might think of belonging to a church like a pinprick or a um, very small location. But that's not the church that Psalm 66 talks about. In the first 12 verses of Psalm 66, the church is God's congregation. Believers in all times and all places. There are no walls. There are no buildings. There is no location given. There is no synodical affiliation. The church, God's congregation, the Holy Christian Church that we confess that we believe in the third article of the Apostles' Creed shouts its praise to God in the first four verses of Psalm 66, invites others to witness God's amazing and almighty power in verses 5 through 8, and praises God even when going through adversity and trial. That's verses 9 through 12. Why does God's congregation the Holy Christian Church, the invisible church, believers of all times and all places shout God's praises? The psalm tells us it's because of God's awesome deeds and his great power over his enemies. Two of the countless examples of God's awesome deeds are given in verse 6 of Psalm 66. The first is when God transformed the Red Sea into dry land so the children of Israel, his chosen people, Many millions in number could cross through the Red Sea on dry ground as the Egyptian army was pursuing them after they left Egypt after 400 years of slavery. That's the first awesome deed. The second awesome deed brings the children of Israel across the Jordan River into the Promised Land, Canaan. But across the Jordan River at flood stage, at a time when nobody would ever try to cross a river, these two awesome deeds were so well known in the children of Israel that just the mere mention of crossing over on dry, dry ground or walking through the waters brought back those memories. But these aren't the only awesome deeds that God has done. How about God being born? Just think about that. 
Add to that God being born of a virgin mother, just as it was promised and foretold in the book of Isaiah. Here's another one. God becoming fully human in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus was born, he ate, he slept, he cried, he bled, he died. And yet, Jesus remained true God through all of that. Here's a third one. How about that same Jesus Christ keeping all of God's laws perfectly in the place of every person who has ever been born, lived, or died? So that in all places, people of all times and places could be saved from eternal death in hell. He's the savior of our fallen race. That's an awesome deed in anyone's book. Now, this is not to say that the believer's life will be easy. No, not by any means. Verses 10 through 12 talk about the trials in a believer's life. It is like God is the silversmith, and we are the silver that he wants to make pure and brilliant. Silver is not found in its pure form in nature. You find no lumps or nuggets of it in the ground. Silver is usually combined with lead in a mineral called galena, which incidentally is the state mineral of Kansas and Missouri and Wisconsin, and it gives its name to a city in Kansas and a city in Illinois. Watch a video on the internet about silver refining, and you can see all of the hard work that goes into mining the ore, crushing the ore, heating the ore to just the right temperature to separate the impurities from silver. The Bible calls, calls those impurities dross. It's not easy, but it's worth it. In the same way, Jesus has refined our sinful hearts by giving up his life for us. That's the hardest thing a person could ever do. And why did he did it? Because he loves us so much, he didn't want to lose us to the devil. This is why the church, God's congregation, the Holy Christian Church, the Invisible Church, whatever the name, all believers of all times and places, praises God. Verse 12 ends part one of Psalm 66 with words of hope and relief. After listing all of the trials and adversities that the church goes through and yet still praises God during, verse 12 gives the happy conclusion that God brings us through the refiner's fire, through prison, through carrying heavy burdens in life, through letting people ride all over our heads, through fire and deep water to bring us out, here's the words, to a place of abundance. Where is that? Heaven. The place Jesus is preparing for all believers right now. In Psalm 66, the same Hebrew word for a place of abundance was also used by King David in Psalm 23 when he said, my cup overflows. So the church praises God for his ultimate blessing, overflowing and abundant life in heaven. That's part one of Psalm 66. Part two gets personal. The final eight verses of part two, um, the final eight verses of Psalm 66 are part two. In part one, we saw how the entire congregation of God from the first man to all of the saints now who have gone before us into heaven, praise God together with loud shouts and acclamations. But in part two, the believer gives back to God their all and their best, confessing what God has done for them and praising God for it. In both parts one and part two of Psalm 66, we see the words, come and see, or come and hear. Isn't this what you do when you have good news? You can't help but find somebody that doesn't know the good news and you tell them, hey, this is what I've heard. Come and see. Come and hear. So it is with the church and the believer. We have good news to tell to the world and to our neighbors. God, our God, has done awesome deeds. Let's praise him for it. Please pray with me. Almighty God and Father, 
By the waters of baptism, you clothed your own congregation of believers, the Holy Christian Church, in the robe of your Son's righteousness, and have given us a new heart to hate sin. Preserve, in us, preserve us in this faith and hear us as we lift our voices in individual and corporate songs of praise for your awesome deeds and for your unfailing power and love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please join with me in the singing of Psalm 66. Let all the earth sing out our Savior's praise. Cry out to God with joy. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. All the earth bows down to you. They sing the praises of your name. Come and see what God has done. His awesome deeds for mankind. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in Him. Let all the earth sing out our Savior's praise. Cry out to God with joy. Praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of His praise be heard has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. I will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfill my vows to you. Vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke when I was in trouble. Let all the earth sing out our Savior's praise. Cry out to God with joy. Come and hear all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer, or withheld his love from me. Glory Glory be to to the the Father, Father, and and to to the the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let all the earth sing out our Savior's praise. 